I'm about to service the PCV system of a Volvo 850. This is a 95 model, which makes it a little bit good for most users because it has an EGR system in it, and I'll get to clean the EGR out as well. And uh, let me go ahead and explain a little bit about this system to you. PCV stands for Positive Crankcase Ventilation System. I believe all combustion cars have it, and basically what happens is as a car is running, combustion gases blow by and unburned fuel and other contaminants within the engine. This uh, contamination and, and bad gases and, and oil vapors have to be managed somehow by the motor or else it will become uh, a detriment to the motor creating acids and, and things like that that will eat away at the inside of the motor. So. All these cars have this uh, PCV system, and some of them have like a check valve system that that expels the gases and contaminants and manages them one way. Volvo is a company that prides themselves in being uh, green friendly, so what they've actually done is try to recycle these gases through what's called a uh, uh, oil trap. So those are the two basic systems for dealing with these gases. Now, over the years, these parts deteriorate and the system gets clogged up. So, 5, 10, 15 years down the road, this system is going to need to be serviced, whether it's a Volvo or another type of vehicle. Now, the Volvo has the oil trap, so uh, you'll have to find those tubes and connectors that uh, relate to that system. Make sure they're still serviceable. If not, they'll need to be cleaned or replaced. I tell people it's something you do on average of every 10 years, 120,000 miles, uh, 100,000 miles. Just go ahead and replace it. But if you want to try to take it apart, try to clean it. If it don't fall apart, uh, th that'll be fine. Now, the box itself rarely needs to be replaced, but most of the other stuff is brittle and deteriorated, so it will need to be replaced. Now, when this PCV system becomes unserviceable, uh, Nine times out of ten, it'll cause you to fail emissions. Well, as cars get older, they start failing emissions. In a lot of states, politicians have actually waived the emissions requirement on older cars because these systems are, are not properly dealing with these poison gases and they're not uh, being filtered properly. Well, Volvo being a friendly company that wants to help the environment, as long as you service their flame trap uh, and their breather boxes, this system can create, uh, help this car pass emissions for 100 years. So it is a better system with dealing with these gases, but there's a downside to the system that they created. Okay, the downside to the system. Once the system gets clogged, it starts building pressure in the motor. This pressure building up in the motor can cause seals to blow. Front cam seals, you got two on this side of the motor, they can blow, cause massive oil leaks. Rear cam seal leaks, you got one at the distributor, one at the cam sensor, they can blow, cause major oil leaks. You got your front tank seal down there by your harmonic balancer. You got your rear main seal between the motor and the transmission. If those seals blow, especially this rear main seal, it's a very expensive fix for a $20 filter, uh, $20 seal, because you'll have to pull the motor or drop the transmission to replace that seal. So, in the Volvo car, you don't want that system to get clogged up it could cause you major oil leaks. I once blew two seals at a red light, and between that red light and getting home, which was two miles, I lost two and a half quarts of oil. Had I have been going somewhere else, I could have easily purged the motor of all of its oil and damaged the motor. Fortunate for me, I was on my way home. Now, there's primarily three ways to tell if your PCV system is clogged, and really two. But one clue is if you remove the cover off the top of your spark plugs on top of your motor and you see a lot of oil pulling up on top of the motor, that's a sign that the PCV system is probably forcing uh, these vapors and, and some oil out of your crankcase, leaking past your oil cap and down onto the top of the motor. So that's your first clue. 
Now, the other two things I actually call a test. One, you start the motor, you pull the dipstick out when the motor gets warmed up about a couple inches. If it's smoke coming out of that dipstick, it's probably clogged. The second test is to actually put a glove over the oil filler cap and start the motor. If that, oil, if that glove inflates, that's a sign that pressure is building up. That glove should actually suck in a little bit, and as you rev the motor up to like 1,500 or 2,000, it should try to suck the glove in more, not inflate it. So, I start the car, I pull a dipstick out. If I see smoke coming out the dipstick, I know the system is in need of service. The car's kind of cold, so that may not work. So, I take my oil cap off, I put a rubber glove on, and if this rubber glove inflates, the system is in need of service. As you can see, the rubber glove inflated right up, so the system is clogged. Now, the system being clogged, there's uh, a couple things that could be happening here. You could have a couple of the vacuum lines clogged, the elbows torn or broken, and there's on the back, back here by the turbo, there's a... Uh, at the base of that intake, there's a part called the PTC. Sometimes that clogs up, and that'll uh, stop up the whole system. So if you suspect or you want to try to clean that first, you can go ahead and clean that and rerun the test. If it passes the test, you're good to go. If it fails the test, go ahead and dig into the rest of the system. Make sure the rest of the system is cleaned and serviced. If your car is not turbo, you can look on the back of the... Uh, throttle body intake tube and pull off the connection there which has the flame trap in it and this is what the flame trap looks like and the housing on it you turn it about an eighth of a turn and pull it out of the intake tubing and sometimes on your passenger side of your manifold there's a little tube there that gets torn or comes loose and that'll cause a dipstick to smoke as well if you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.